Hey everybody, it's JB. I just wanted to make a quick video for you guys uh, showing how I'm going to set up my tones for a couple of upcoming gigs that I have this weekend with a trio that's doing mostly funk and soul covers, very vintage themed kind of sound. And I wanted to get a real specific setup to make this work and make it real minimalistic and simple, even though I'm using Helix. So I'm using my Comfort Zone guitar, my 335 that I've had for almost 30 years, which is insane. I haven't been playing out nearly enough, so this is a great way for me to just feel at home and get a sound that's that has accompanied me on many adventures. So um, that's this guitar going into my BBE Wah, which I love, and then the Helix, and then straight to the Mesa California Tweed which I really think is the perfect amp for this type of gig. So instead of having presets per song, as I normally would do, and four cable method and all that other stuff, instead of all that, uh, I'm just running Helix in front of the amp, set almost clean, a little bit of dirt, and then um, just adding some snapshots instead of Presets just have one preset and have eight go-to snapshots that just add and take away different effects. So the first one's clean, which means almost clean. Wait a minute, that ain't clean. There it is. So that's the that's the almost clean sound. And then um, any dirt you're hearing is just mostly, it's really the power section of the amp breaking up. I have it turned down a little too low on my multi-watt right now. I have it to two watts because I'm talking over it. But on the gig, I'm going to have it set to 20 watts, which is just right to keep up with the drums and compress a little bit in a way that feels really good and just sort of sits right. But right now I have it down to its lowest possible setting just for the sake of uh, making this video. But it's not, it's not real dirty. If you play lightly, it's totally clean. And then if you dig in, you get some, some grunt. So that's what's going on with that. Uh, the next one I'm using is my tremolo. Say what you want, but the tremolo models in Line 6 gear, the Opto Trem in the Helix, has always worked for me. And I'm a tremolo nerd. I probably use tremolo more than any other effect. But this one has always worked for me. It does exactly the thing I want. That is not just a sine wave that you're hearing. That's a real nice throbby sort of curve that makes you feel like you're playing through an old Fender amp, which is exactly what you want. So next I've got my drive tone, which is a light drive. I'm using the Tima and I've played around with the high cut to get it to sound as transparent as possible, meaning that it just sounds like the same tone, but with more gain. still fully hear the personality of the guitar. There's no uh, big mid honk or anything like that. It's exactly what I want. And then a tremolo version of that. And I do find I use that one. Uh, I don't use it as much as the clean trim, but I need it for certain songs. Then I have two more clean uh, presets. One, snapshots, I'm sorry. One is just a slow phase 90, script phase. For songs that have a lot of funk rhythm and I just wanna have something swirly going on but nothing too obvious. And then one that's way more obvious, which is my uh, clean vibe snapshot. Really nice for 
like a Rhodes, almost like a Rhodes type of sound on the neck pickup. It's amazing how effective that is in a trio setting where you've got no keyboards and you just want to have something moody and nighttimey sounding that you're that you're playing behind your vocals. Keep in mind a lot of this has to do with the fact that I'm singing lead vocals on the gig. When you're singing lead vocals on a gig, you do not want to be tap dancing on your pedals. Uh, it just doesn't work. You're too busy trying to engage the crowd, you're trying to remember the lyrics, you're trying to sing in tune, and you're trying to play rhythm guitar with good time. The last thing you want to worry about is switching two things off and one thing on and going to the correct pickup and hitting your tone control and forget it. There's no way in the world. I've done it a million times and never again. So snapshots are particularly the way to go if you're singing lead. So I'm doing that. And then I have my dirty sounds. One of them is, uh, is for riffs and just, um, you know, kind of heavier solos. This one is, uh, what is it now? It's the Tone Sovereign. I don't have too much gain on the first half and then on the second half I'm using a lot of gain. <laughs> not as convinced on this tone. I may end up replacing it with another Tima, but just with the gain cranked, just to get another version of the same gain sound, but just with a lot more juice. What I am using a lot for the really crazy parts is the Dark Dove Fuzz. I'm using it a lot. It sounds great. That's my fuzz tone. That's what I'm really using for um, big heavy solos and stuff like that. So those are the eight snapshots. I'm finding that I can navigate those fairly well. And then when I want to add something extra spicy, I'll hit both of my uh, bank switches and it'll switch over to pedal board mode, which is just a bunch of um, stops that I can add. So for example, an octave. Anybody who's played in a power trio knows that an octave pedal uh, really helps sometimes when you launch into a solo and all of a sudden the rhythm guitar is gone and there's nothing in the mid-range at all and you don't want the bass player to have to go and cover for you too much, although Poncho is the guy for that if you need someone to do it. He comes from the Jack Bruce school of when the guitar player starts soloing, the bass player might have to be soloing a little bit as well to kind of like create some movement in, you know, where there would normally be rhythm guitar. Uh, let's see here. So that one, I have a flanger. I'm not sure why. You wouldn't really need a flanger on this kind of music. Um, I have a reverse delay, and the reverse delay is for moments where you want to get really psychedelic, and we do have one of those moments in the show. So when that happens, it's this kind of vibe. I do have a big hall reverb on there. I'm finding that I'm not using the hall reverb. I'm not using the flanger. So it'd probably be a good idea to replace those with some pedals that I might be more likely to use on this gig. But honestly, it's just not a pedal heavy gig. You may be noticing that there's no delay on anything, but that's not actually true. Rather, there's delay on everything. I have a delay that's just silent on my expression pedal and I bring it in when I need it. So delay is on all snapshots and on the first four, it's an eighth note and on the second four, it's a quarter note. 
uh, it's an Adriatic analog delay after the gain pedals, obviously. Now, one thing about that is that, and this is kind of a tip for this, is that if you want your delay to sound okay after distortion, you're probably gonna need to crank up the headroom in your delay settings. That headroom control is so important because the delay gets really, really dirty really fast. So since I don't want it to be quite that crazy, um, I just I just get it to where it's it, it distorts a little bit, but it's not too bad. So why would I not want it to be quarter note on all eight snapshots? The reason why is because um, when I'm playing guitar, let's say I'm doing a, a slow reggae or any reggae really, and the tempo is like this, if I want a short delay, I don't want to have to click it that fast. I don't want to have to go ta, 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 ta. That's the kind of thing that makes you nervous on a gig because it might not come out the way you expect it to. And it's just, that's, that's too much tapping. It's undignified. So I'd rather go click, 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 click like that. And then you get your nice. So all my kind of rhythm oriented tones are set up more with a slap back in mind. And then um, on the later stuff, which is either a little more atmospheric or lead sounds, that's when I would rather have it default to a quarter note, even in the same song. So here's the thing, if I switch between a, an eighth note patch or an eighth note snapshot to a quarter note snapshot in the same song, it sounds like I've switched echoes and it just adds a lot more dreaminess. And I have it set to where it's pretty darn loud when I floor it. That's a lot of, uh, of delay. Guitar's going out of tune. So the reason I decided to uh, put delay on a pedal is because it allows me to have only eight snapshots, but be able to put delay. Delay is one of those things that you, you can hear on the fly anyway. When you're in the middle of the heat of battle and you're just playing, you know if you want delay or not. So I'm just kind of riding that pedal a lot, especially in this music. This isn't a Pink Floyd type of thing where you've got different delays and different delay times and a bunch of stuff going on. This is a soul funk gig. So basically when you add delay, you're either adding a bluesy sl slap or a psychedelic long echo as an effect, not as a baseline tone. You wouldn't leave it on all the time on this gig. Home base is Steve Cropper, you know, like getting back to this, whoops, getting back to this kind of thing, you know? With spring reverb on the app, that's the other thing. I'm not putting reverb on any of these uh, snapshots because I can just turn over and crank up this delicious. You know, to get those old amp reverb sounds. It's That is the vintagiest, splashiest reverb that I have in my arsenal, in my whole studio, including pedals, plugins, this amp has the dopest, big spring kind of splashy thing. I love it. So perfect for this gig. I'm super happy with these tones. Um, I, I may end up going with the Tima for the heavy, heavier dirt, not the, not the fuzz, but the kind of dirty dirt, just to see if it's better. <laughs> You can hear it compressing and doing things. So that makes sense to me for for riffs. Like we do a thing in I Shot the Sheriff where it goes. That's the sound. So instead of the Tone Sovereign, I switched over to the Tima. Sounds boring because I'm using Tima for just about everything. But what I'm finding is that I want it to sound like I'm just exploiting all the different levels of the gain knob 
without actually doing it. So Tima is the way to go for that one. I do wish that I had a snapshot for fuzz and octave, but I'm getting used to switching back and forth between pedal board mode, like when I'm really soloing and stuff, I just go to pedal board mode and just kind of kick it in and do things that need to be done. So I don't think it's really an issue. Anyway, that's it. That's what's going on with this, with this setup. It's working for this gig, so. I'm excited, and if I uh, get any decent footage of the show, I will include it in this video. See you later. Here we go. Yeah.